Um, I'm Brad Walton, head coach of Geraldine High School. To my right, I got Bob Harper. And to my left, Alexis Gutierrez. Um, we wanted an outlook for the season. Um, I'm just glad we're starting. Uh, I don't know about an outlook. Um, as the team goes, we're, we're really young. Lost a lot of players to graduation this past year. Um, I had seven guys that were two-year starters on both sides of the ball, so we've got a lot of, a lot of things to figure out between now and the kickoff last the season. Uh, I like the kids we've got. You know, they're young, but uh, they got a lot of energy. A lot of them, they're, they're excited to learn. And, uh, but you know, they're still young. There's no, no substitute for experience. So, uh, you know, we're just we're trying, to, trying to get those guys that serve and teach them step by step as we go. Questions? For the players, what legacy do you want to leave behind this year when you leave Geraldine? What do you want the younger kids to see in you that would inspire them to play football? Well, I want them to know that we're here and it's 2020 and a lot of stuff's going on and uh, we still did it and we're playing football, and I just want them to know that they can do it too. Coach, as, as this year has kind of progressed since, uh, since March, and things have been uncertain, you're getting a lot of answers now, uh, and a lot of positive directions going for that. Uh, what have been some of the challenges that you maybe felt like you've had to overcome as a coach? I know a lot of uh, pretty much every coach has had to go through the same thing. But what, what for Geraldine has been some of those obstacles that you've had to overcome with the way that uh, the new society is right now and, and with the ball trying to get here and uh, with the uh, announcement that we will have? What have been some of those challenges that you've been having heard? I, I guess the hardest thing to deal with is, is trying to develop a continuity between the kids. Um, you know, when you can't get them all together and work them all at the same time, you know, you've got to get this group over here and that group over there and try to keep them separate uh, for the entire of the summer workouts. You know, you, you worry about how they're going to respond to each other when you put them all back together. So for me, I guess that would be one of the toughest hurdles uh, would be having all the kids separated and then trying to get them back together and build that continuity in such a short amount of time. Well, Coach, I, you know, I've asked this to several of the coaches. With all this going on, there's, you know, these players have a lot more distractions, a lot more things going on. Do you think they're more receptive now? Uh, because, you know, they just want to play football. And do uh, you think they're a lot more respect, uh, respond better to their coaching this year than they have probably in the past? Well, I, I don't know that that's the case as a whole with all the kids. But definitely for some, uh, I see it even more so maybe with my senior group uh, because they, they knew or they felt like there was a possibility that they might not even get a senior season. And so, uh, you know, their level of excitement toward being, actually, being able to actually play, I think is even you know, higher than some of the other kids. But, you know, as a whole, I, I can sense a little more excitement, you know, in the air versus years past. You know, just because there was that possibility that like, we might not even get to play. Well, Coach, tell me a little bit about the uh, makeup of your team. How many seniors you lost from last year? Where the leadership of this year's team is going to come from? How many seniors you have this year? Um, last year we graduated 11. Um, and this year we've got seven seniors. Um, you know, as, as far as leadership goes, um, I don't know that any one individual or two individuals has stepped into that role yet. Um, you know, we've only had the ability to be together now. This has been day five where we've actually been together as a unit. You know, and so that guy still hadn't jumped on the scene. You know, he hadn't stepped out. Um, so we're still looking, waiting on that guy. You know. And it may be two, you never know. You know, or three or four. I'll take 11, you know. Um, as far as our makeup this year, uh, we've got a lot of new guys filling positions. Um, I think we've got you know, five positions on offense. Um, 
as far as what if we went out there and started to play the game right now, I'd have five guys that had never took a snap on Friday night. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's, that's going to be challenging. Defensively, we're similar. We got four or five cats over there that, you know, I'm not saying we've never played a down, and, and not that all downs don't matter, but in crunch time and, and you know, in, in, the, in the heat of the battle, they've never really been, uh, you know, at that point. So we're just, you know, we're young and trying to build and trying to grow. Yeah, obviously, experience will be something that you'll, you'll get at as that time comes. What else will you need to improve on this year to, to maybe take another step before you were in the third round last year? Well, you know, you, you probably get the same answer out of every coach you ask that question. We just got to execute that. You know, you, uh, you feel like you've got a pretty good plan and, and everybody's bought in. And you go back and you watch the game films and, and you can always pick out six or seven, eight plays from that game that, hey, if, if we would have executed right here, you know, this could have been a different game. So, you know, you're always trying to, to work on execution and being more perfect. You know, you know, I say we can't be perfect, but we can find our strategy. So. We had the pleasure of calling you guys last year versus how, how do you feel as far as the physicality of the team? You've got a physical edge, y'all have. So you feel like that's going to be something that's going to be tough to replicate? There's no spring. And how are you going to get that up to that level in the previous years? Well, um, I, I, I always tell my kids, you know, um, there's some things in life you don't have a choice about. Being physical is not one of them. So, you know, being physical is a choice. And, uh, you know, we, that's something we try to instill. If you, if you choose not to be physical, you're probably choosing not to play. So, you know, whether we can get back to that level or not is another question. You know, you've got a different group of guys, you've got different mentalities, you've got different age levels, maturity levels. And so, you know, that, that's what we want to get to, you know, um, the brand we play. If we're not going to play physical, we're not going to be very good. So, yes, that's definitely something we've got to work on. Question players, uh, how have you guys kind of handled yourselves and your team during the uh, during this sort of, uh, I don't even like to call it offseason because it's just been so weird, but how have you guys sort of handled yourselves before they let you get back in the gym and, and work it out in the gym together? How did you guys kind of handle yourselves as a teammates? Well, we had a uh, group message before any of this stuff started, and uh, coach told us what to do and just try to keep us in shape and stuff. And when we got together, we just we stay separated, just done the best we could, just try to get better. This for both players. It has to be a great honor for Coach to pick you to come here today to represent your football team. Do you think that really puts pressure on you to be a leader? He's asking for leaders. Uh, do you feel like that puts the pressure on you to be a leader on your football team on and off the field? Uh, yeah, I think it does. Not working for me. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. Uh, for him to pick us, it uh, tells a lot about us and everything like that. And we just got to be a leader from today to tomorrow. Just do the best we can and try to hop everybody up. And Later. Coach, the schedule kind of changed, regions twist around. You don't have Susan Moore in the region anymore, but you picked up a couple of traditional rivals. Uh, of course, you played five anyway, but this region is going to be very competitive. Well, you know, our region's always been competitive. You know, I feel like we've had where we're at our location, you know, um, geographically, it's, it's always been a competitive region. People around this area love football. Friday night lights is where it's all at. But um, I don't know. I, I mean, you, know, you don't want to say the region got tougher or it got weaker either way, you know. Um, but all in all, you know, every every game, region game is going to be a battle. Um, you got five, you know, two county two, two A state champion. Uh, you got Collins when he comes into the region, who was a semi final 218 last year. Um, you know, you got. The, the teams that have been here, so like a year in, year out, you know, uh, it's a heck of a day team, a heck of a game every, every time we play. Um, you know, playing you get better and better and better, and I think Coach Ledbetter does a heck of a job with him. So, you know, you don't, 
we, we expect a ball game every Friday night, you know. So, yeah, I like our region just as good as anybody's in the state, especially in 3A. We're talking to some coaches that uh, have said with spring sports, spring football is difficult scheduling anyway. They might prefer the extra week in the fall or in the summer. What do you think about that? That would be an absolute no for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't uh, express to you how much I missed having spring training this year. Uh, you know, some guys would be okay. You know, this is one of those years, like we've already said, I had a bunch of guys that lost to graduation. Uh, not having spring, left a lot of questions in the air coming into fall camp. Um, you know, the supposed week, extra week we're getting in the fall, you know, they say it's making up for lost time, and I say you can't make up for lost time. Uh, you only get time once, and once it's gone, it's lost. So, um, yeah, I, if that was put to a vote, I would never vote yes on that one. Well, Coach, I think you might agree with this. It's the good thing about spring football practice, you focus on you. And there's no distractions. You've got no, you know, we might have a spring game, but the focus is on you and about teaching and fundamentals, and you know, the kids get better. They learn a lot here in spring. Oh, yeah, the, the, you know, there's nothing like spring training. Uh, you, know, you don't have all the, um, I guess you, what I call blah blah leading up to spring. You know, when the spring starts, you go out and practice. You know, and so you, you get those those days to just work on your kids and uh, you figure out. You know, sometimes you don't get all the answers you're looking for, but you can you can definitely slow them down. Those two weeks, you know, two week time frame to help you grow. Coach, with losing seniors and not having the spring practice, how have you scrambled to get people? Who is being your shining star in different positions that you'd like to talk about? Uh, you know me for a long time. You know you should have asked that question. I know. <laughs> um, because I, I don't like to point at people and say he's a shining star. Uh, we've got a lot of people out there. And, and None of them better than the other one, um, but you know, uh, you know there are some kids that are that are pushing and working. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not gonna name a name. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, you know, if they're out there, you know, the one's just as good as the other, and they're equal in my eyes.